Hey, how about it, race fans? Richard Allen of InsideDirtRacing.com and InsideCircleTrack.com. Trying something new this weekend. I'm going to try to uh, start doing uh, a weekend preview and predictions uh, piece that I'll put on here, uh, hopefully once a week. Uh, I try to do the Rich's ramblings as often as I can, but as I explained in some of the earlier videos I've done, my work schedule kind of gets in the way. I'm, if you don't know, I'm a high school teacher at Seymour High School in Seymour, Tennessee, uh, but in the summer, I also work for our school systems maintenance department, and that keeps him pretty busy as well. But uh, anyway, hopefully we can get on to some kind of a regular basis. So like I said, I'm going to try to do a little weekend preview of some of the bigger races that are coming up uh, here in the next uh, couple of days, here from August the 18th to August the 20th, and uh, to give you an idea who I think uh, might wind up in victory lane at each one of those races. And I'm going to start out with the race that I'm most likely going to be going to uh, on Saturday, and that is the the Butterball Wood, Woolridge Memorial at Richmond Raceway. Uh, always, it's one of my favorite places. I, I enjoy going up there. It's a nice drive up there, and, and uh, usually the racing tends to be pretty good. There's twenty twenty thousand and fifty nine dollars going to the winner there at Richmond Raceway. So I uh, look forward to that. Should be a a nice turnout of both fans and competitors. I would think with a with a purse of that of that size up there. Last year's race was a really good one. Uh, Josh Rice was leading late in the race. Uh, Ricky Weiss was able to get around him uh, with just uh, two or three laps remaining and then uh, went on to win the race. So uh, that made it awfully exciting whenever you got a pass. Of course, that late in the going, uh, it always always makes for a good show. In this particular time around, uh, like I said, I'm going to try to offer up a prediction. So I'm going to say that Josh Rice will uh, come back and, and kind of avenge his his loss from last year and will be the one who picks up that uh, $20,000 at the end of the night on Saturday. It's actually a two-day show. Uh, I think they're doing some of the, the qualifying and maybe some heat racing or something uh, with the super late models on Friday night. It's actually run under the uh, Ultimate Heart of America uh, series, which uh, mostly, I think, races up in Kentucky. So uh, that that'll be the, the sanction uh, that'll be taking care of it. So, uh, but it all, uh, I'm really looking forward to heading up there. It ought to be good. The weather looks like it's going to be great. So, uh, hoping for a great show and, uh, hope to, uh, see some of you there. So, uh, and whether, whether it's at that race or any other race, whether it's a big, uh, one of the big, uh, touring series or just, uh, at your, uh, local track. Hope er everybody will get out and, uh, take in a race. So my pick to win at, uh, Richmond this weekend is Josh Rice. Uh, now, moving on to the next one. Next one I'm going to cover is the Topless 100, one of the bigger races on the super late model, dirt late model schedule every year at the Batesville Motor Speedway. Pays 50000 to win. It's under the sanction of the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series. Uh, so uh, this one it offers that unique feel. It's uh, one of the very few races that the, that the major tours take on that uh, run topless, run with the roof off of the car. So... Uh, gives you a unique view of the drivers as they're in there doing their job, uh, racing around uh, around the Batesville Motor Speedway. Uh, the last two winners of this race in 21, the winner was uh, Hudson O'Neill, and in 22, the winner was Jonathan Davenport. Uh, I look for those two to certainly be in contention. Of course, you can't look past Ricky Thornton Jr. Uh, he's in he's in contention every week, so don't know why you'd look past him. And of course, you know the usual cast of characters: uh, Brandon Overton or Tim McCready, uh, guys like that are are apt to jump in there as well. Uh, I'm I'm going to uh, pick that uh, Hudson O'Neill uh, will come back and and win another Topless 100 this weekend. He's just been so close all year. The battles that he's had with Bobby Pierce or battles that he's had with Ricky Thornton Jr. Uh, those three drivers have spent a lot of time at the at the top of the pole in that dirt on dirt uh, top twenty five pole, which I'm one of the voters of. So, uh, and I'll uh, I got nothing to hide. I vote for the, those three. Have been my top three. Uh, kind of maybe switching the order a little bit uh, throughout most of the season, throughout much of the season. So, uh, Jonathan Davenport's going to be coming in with a little bit of momentum on his side after winning that really exciting. Uh, superstar racing experience race there at Lucas Oil Speedway in Wheatland, Missouri on Thursday night. Uh, of course, that really has no bearing on this, but uh, uh, may at least put him in an even more positive frame of mind. And like I said, I look for him to be a contender, and he did win this race last year. 
uh, but I'm I'm going to say the 2021 uh, winner Hudson O'Neill kind of finally gets over the top uh, with some of these close calls that he's had over the last few weeks, and he'll be the one to pick up the fifty thousand dollars. Then another show coming up this weekend. It's kind of a combined effort. Uh, the Schaefer's Oil Southern Nationals race. It was intended for East Alabama Motor Speedway back in July. Got rained out. They had just gotten qualifying in and then uh, had to uh, call it off when the rain came in. They're going to pick up where they left off with that race on Friday night at East Alabama. And then uh, there is a Hunt the Front uh, race that will take place on Saturday. So it's got a little double header, sort of an impromptu double header. Uh, the Southern Nationals race will pay 7553 to win. The Hunter Front race on on Saturday pays 10000 to win. They had, Like I said, they'd already had qualifying for the Southern Nationals, and Carson Ferguson had been the fast qualifier. They, that's going to be a 40-lap feature uh, that they'll run for that $7,500. I'm going to go ahead and predict that Carson Ferguson will pick up pick up that win. He was fast there. Of course, you know, being fast back in July doesn't necessarily mean that three or four weeks later he's going to be fast again, but uh, he's certainly going to be sitting in a good position having been the fast qualifier uh, coming in. On on Saturday, maybe kind of a little bit of a surprise, but uh, a guy who had qualified very well for the Southern Nationals race, I'm going to predict that Peyton Freeman uh, picks up the win at East Alabama with the Hunt the Front crew and picks up that $10,000. So uh, we'll see see how that prediction turns out. But again, Carson Ferguson win the Southern Nationals race on Friday night and Peyton Freeman uh, to get the win for the Hunt the Front on Saturday at East Alabama. And uh, then kind of turning away from the late models a little bit, I'm going to uh, venture a guess into the World of Outlaws NOS Energy Drink Sprint Car Series. They're having one of their bigger events up at the Jackson Motorplex in Jackson, Minnesota. Uh, the Jackson Nationals that they're having, they it's actually a three-day show. Uh, they started off on Thursday night uh, with James McFadden just beating out uh, Donnie Schatz uh, to get the win up there on on uh, uh, Thursday. They'll have Friday, another preliminary night here on Friday, and then the big show, the main event, will be on Saturday. And I'm going to pre- predict that Donnie Schatz uh, comes away the winner of that race. So uh, I think he'll he'll get the big paycheck. He might have just lost out on Thursday, and we'll see what happens on Friday. But uh, I think on Saturday it's going to be Donnie Schatz. And then lastly, to kind of get away from dirt altogether, uh, going on to NASCAR, and uh, the NASCAR Sprint Cup or Sprint Cup, the NASCAR Cup Series is going to be racing at uh, Watkins Glen International. Uh, last year, Kyle Larson won that race, kind of a little bump and run there on Chase Elliott. At the end, goes on to get the win. Uh, but uh, of course, there's a lot of pressure packed situation. You got several guys trying to get one of those last playoff spots uh, coming into this week, and I, I'm going to predict. That you know, for the Chase Elliott fans out there, I'm going to predict that Chase Elliott is going to come through, win on Sunday, and lock himself into the NASCAR playoffs with just the one more race remaining. The cutoff race will be next week at Daytona International Speedway, but I'm going to say that Chase Elliott will not have to go to Daytona in a, in a win and get in type scenario. He will have taken care of the win already. I know that he. Uh, he has uh, not won a road course race since NASCAR switched to the next gen, but he was uh, very close there at Indianapolis last week. He was gaining on Michael McDowell at the very end of the race, uh, and you know just a few more laps, he might very well have been able to make a pass. But this time, uh, of course, these road course races they all come down to strategy and who pits when and all that. So uh, I'm predicting that he and his team will be on top of their game. They will secure their playoff spot on uh, Sunday afternoon and uh, be able to go to uh, Daytona breathing a little bit easier. But anyway, I'm Richard Allen from InsideDirtRacing.com and InsideCircleTrack.com. That's my preview and my predictions for this coming weekend in the world of racing. Hope to see you at the track.